you want to view photos, right? What if you were given a computer and only half the screen was visible? Or maybe the mouse only worked on so many things. You would probably get frustrated and say, I'm not doing this anymore. And I'll go on to another website. My name is Bettina Jelinsek. I work for um, Nationwide Insurance and uh, I work on our digital accessibility team. I'm also the state president for the Iowa Council of the United Blind and my husband is the Des Moines chapter president. Well, you know, really it was through looking at different things at work that weren't accessible and you know, then noticing, hey, we do have an accessibility team mm -hmm. that works on those things. So then it really became a passion of mine to, to do that, you know, to, to work on. Who would you be if you could be a favorite character from a book? Okay, so I don't read fiction. Okay. Oh. So like a historical uh, figure from a book that maybe you could meet. You oh meet my gosh, person. okay, so I'm gonna give you two. Okay. And one would be Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, I just, I think that she just changed what it meant to be the first lady and, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes, yeah. Indeed. Two really strong women who I just would be wonderful just to sit back and honestly listen to them talk and I could just sit and listen. The biggest question that I have is when people come and see our library is that they'll say, wow, there's a lot of print books here. How do you read that? Yeah. And that's a very good question. So I'm going to just grab one of the books and, um, Let's just take one, doesn't matter where. So I'll just grab one here. It's a great one. Okay. So it's I'm just gonna pull it yeah, nice and thick, right? It's a yeah. good read right there. The so, bully pulpit? Yep, so the bully pulpit's a great read. I recommend it to any of you guys. Um, but anyway, so this is a print book. And for someone who's blind, what we can do is we can take the book and we can put it on a scanner. So let me open it. Yeah. And so what we'll do is we'll take the book, open it to the beginning, of course, but I'm just opening it to a page. And then I can take it and lay it on a scanner. And what would happen is it lays like this. Okay. And then the scanner will scan underneath it and then put it up on the computer screen, oh. the text. Okay. And then we can take that text, put it on a thumb drive, and then plug it into a Braille device so we can read it in Braille. Fantastic. So if I were to have all Braille books, I don't think I could have this many because this book alone would probably be, I would say, 10 or 12 volumes in Braille. So this is my favorite book and go ahead and read the title and you'll know why. So the favorite book that you selected is Divine Love as Need, Divine Reconciling, Divine Perfection with Divine Need. Dolan Sec. Yeah. yeah, so the reason that this is my favorite book, we can go ahead and kind of open it together, but the reason that this is my favorite book is because it's the dissertation that my husband wrote. This is incredible. So, yep, so this was the final piece of the PhD process. Oh. And if any of you know what that's like, you'll <laughs> understand completely. So this book, uh, when it was done and uh, put into book form that I I pretty much said it's got to sit on my shelf. So going on more of a historical tour, um, what could be some things that we could think about as folks within like the museum fields or the gallery fields or history buffs that um, maybe you'd recommend that we could be doing better for accessibility? Well, I think that when you put up an exhibit, you know, what kind of features do you have? If you walk in and look at something, is there just something on the wall that talks about it that describes it? So maybe include an audio description as well. So if somebody has earbuds that they bring, or maybe the museum offers that, that they can go and they can listen to the same thing that somebody's reading. Um, if you have a sculpture, maybe offering something that can be felt. Um, I know in some of the history museums, some of the artifacts are, um, you, you just can't touch them because they'd fall apart. You know, they're old, they're delicate, they're just things that you can't offer. But what if we could make a 3D model? What if we could come up with something that represents what's there and maybe put it next to the one that's in glass and that so somebody who needs to feel it can. So they're also getting that same experience that the sighted person is getting. Um, and then also figuring out ways for someone who's blind, if they want to walk through the exhibit on their own, how can we get from point A to point B um, accessibly? So you kind of touched a little bit on this, but if you could say maybe the top three impacts of making things accessible for users with the web, what would those top three things be? Oh, that's a good question. Um, 
So I think that a lot of times we don't think about the people who could go out there that maybe have a disability, so you're missing out on the market. Okay. So that's the one thing is that you're missing out on markets. That's a top thing because, you know, if you're working at a job like I do at an insurance company, everybody needs insurance. You know, one of the things that I do a lot is instead of going to the grocery store, I have home delivery. Okay. So I'm going to need to use a website or a computer to, to access that home delivery, right? And so if their app isn't set up, then again, they're missing out on a market of people who really could use that service. My honest opinion is that it's just something that if you don't have a particular disability, you're really not thinking about it until somebody comes forward and says to them, hey, I need to be able to use your website as well. And I use a screen reader. So this is what we can do. And most of the time, when you explain it like that, people are willing to then start to build that into their, their sites. How can you evaluate my site completely for accessibility? And if we could maybe go through a couple things. Yeah, for um, sure. So even in your, you know, as you're planning and then getting to your development phase and then your build phase, okay. you know, each one of those sections, you need to already take accessibility in mind. Okay. Um, if you're not, what ends up is maybe a product is built that's not accessible. And then what you have to do is tear it apart to make it accessible, to add things. I remember speaking with you about my site and the desire to make sure that it is better and accessible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the things that you said that really stood out to me is that you have a specific style that you like to um, let people know what's going well. So how would you kind of describe your style in working with folks on um, them either building from scratch or updating? Yeah, so what I love to do is if I'm gonna walk through your page with you, and we'll do that here in a few minutes, is I really like to point out the things I like. I like to point out the things that work well and tell you that this is good. Um, and then when we come across the areas that need to be changed, we'll call those opportunities. Okay. And then we'll just look at how and discuss how that those things can be changed so that your site can be more accessible. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit tab. So I can bookmark the tab, that's good. So it's telling me what I could do there. So I hear that you have a skip to main content button, which I love. And why is that important? So a skip to main content button is only gonna be visible when the screen reader lands on it. You can get a screen reader. Um, there's one that's free called NVDA. Um, and if you were to go out to Google, check it out, you can actually get that free on your own system. You can turn it on. Um, and then as you're building a page, you can walk through it and do these same things that I'm doing today. Okay, just 